E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Welcome back to Football 24-7. I'm your guy, Tony DeShields II, and I'm joined by John McMullen, our Philadelphia Eagles insider. You guys know what to do, though. Smash that like button. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the Jacob Sports YouTube channel. And also, make sure you guys are checking out all the other amazing content that we have available to you guys. 8 a.m. Eastern Time, Birds 365 with John McMullen and Jody Mack, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, featuring uh, Derek Gunn and Rob Ellis on Sports Take. 3 p.m. Eastern Time, the National Football Show with Dan Cilio. Also, the pre and post and halftime show on weekends on your game days and game nights featuring Seth Joyner, Mike Missinelli, John McMullen himself, Derek Gunn, Mark Frazella, uh, Bill Colarulo, uh, Kayla Santiago. It's a full cast, a full slate of, of people for you guys to lock in on on Jacob Sports. And, of course, make sure you guys are always locked into football 24-7. We're giving you guys episodes three times out of the week. And now the days that those episodes may fall on may vary. John's a busy man, and so am I. Mm-hmm. But you're going to definitely get three episodes a week from John and I on Football 24-7. So, again, make sure you guys lock in on the content and smash that like button. John, how are you feeling uh, this evening, my friend? I heard you uh, ran into some traffic on your way home. Yeah, it happens, uh, you know, the Delaware Valley stuff. There's pretty much nowhere you can go without uh, getting into some traffic. But uh, we made it a little bit uh, a few minutes late. Got to get the dog out. Got to. Got to do some things, as you know, Tone to Shields. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, you know, let's get right into it. I want to start talking about uh, the NFC East. Now, obviously, the Philadelphia Eagles, they face off their first NFC East matchup uh, against the Washington Commanders. This is the first game the Philadelphia Eagles will play the Washington Commanders this season. Um, This is their first NFC East matchup in general. So this is going to be really interesting. Um, I've really been looking at the NFC East as a whole, John, and I think, and some may feel different, but I think this is a really crucial week for the Philadelphia Eagles uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, one being that they have they have an opportunity to not only take a two game lead on the Washington Commanders, but they have an opportunity to take a two game lead on the rest of the NFC East. The Dallas Cowboys are going to face off with the New England Patriots uh, at home, and the New York Giants are going to be facing off. Uh, with the Seattle Seahawks at home. I don't think the Patriots are an easy game, in my opinion, just based off their coaching and how they're being prepared on a week-in, week-out basis. I think the, I, I just think the Seahawks are just flat-out better than the Giants, and the Giants are just imploding uh, week after week. And obviously the Eagles facing the Commanders, I think the Eagles um, can win that game in deciding fashion. Uh, on top of that, all three of those teams I mentioned, Cowboys, Commanders, and Giants, they lost last week, right? Uh, Cowboys... Uh, they lost to the Cardinals. Did not see that coming. Commanders uh, lost to the Buffalo Bills. They got bounced. Uh, then the New York Giants last week, uh, they lost to the 49ers. So this is a really interesting week. They have an opportunity to take a two-game lead on everybody if everything goes according to plan. Uh, what's your overall thoughts on the NFC East right now and all the details that I laid out for you? Um, I, Not much has changed with the NFC East. I think it's a two-horse race. I think it's the Eagles and Dallas. And and then, you know, I'm with you. I, I, I don't like the New York Giants a little bit. I think they overachieved last season. Um, And, you know, they weren't honest with themselves. And, and they kind of made more out of it than it really was. Um, And you've seen the way they played early in the season. I I think they're clearly the worst team in the division. And then Washington is interesting. They have some good players. Obviously, they might have the best uh, front four in football. Um, Good receivers. I like their receivers. Um, But they have a young first-time starting quarterback um, who's, you know, going to have some hiccups. And he had a real big one last week in Buffalo, nine sacks, four interceptions. Uh, so from their standpoint, I think they want to see him learn from that, Sam Howell. Um, and, there, you know, there are no moral victories in, in the NFL, but this doesn't look like a good matchup for Washington. Um, and if they play well, I think they'll they'll take that as a positive step. Last thing, you don't want to see another nine sacks and four interceptions. Then you got to start thinking about, well, Maybe Sam Howell's not ready and you have to go to Jacoby Brissett. But, um, yeah, not much has changed. And I I know people – look, Dallas had a bad game. Uh, You know, Arizona, 
is is you know our old Philadelphia favorites got them playing hard, uh, and they've been in every game, and they jumped up and they they beat the Dallas Cowboys, and that's probably the biggest upset early in the season. But I wouldn't get too hyped up about that. The Cowboys are still a a, a really good team, really talented team, and I'd be surprised if they didn't get back on track at home. Um, from their perspective, though, I do think that Trayvon Diggs injury is is a big one. Um, and I think, you know, that might have shifted things. Not that they weren't in the Eagles' favor uh, because the Eagles are the reigning NFC champions, but I thought they were relatively even, and that might shift. That, that injury is such a big one. That might shift things a little bit towards Philadelphia, but still two, two very good teams, uh, Eagles and the Cowboys. Definitely. You know what makes it interesting about the Cowboys is the way they lost to the Arizona Cardinals, right? It wasn't just that they lost. It was how they lost. Obviously, um, Dak Prescott made a crucial mistake in the red zone. That's kind of been uh, their issue lately, red zone offense. But on defense, um, that defense looked mortal against the Arizona Cardinals, uh, a team that's not really that talented on that side of the ball, especially not having their starting quarterback in Kyler Murray. Um, They had Joshua Dobbs out there, uh, and he kind of led the rushing attack. And I think that's what did the Dallas Cowboys in. They weren't really able to – they weren't able to stop the, uh, stop the run at all. And I think the formula has kind of been put out on this on this Dallas Cowboys defense in terms of limiting the damage that they can do to you. I'm not saying that they've been exposed, but, you know, when, when you think about the way the Eagles beat them last year, running at their best edge rushers, you know, Michael Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence and – the way the Arizona Cardinals beat them this year, and also you couple that with their red zone struggles, and you think about the way the New England Patriots want to play, they they want to run the ball, they want to have a balanced attack. This can, I do, I do anticipate the Cowboys bouncing back against the New England Patriots. I do anticipate that, but I don't think that's a game that they can just come in and just mail it in. I don't think there's any game you can. But they just learn that. I mean, I you know, I think. I say it all the time and, you know, people dismiss it a lot of times and, you know, Eagles fans have gotten a little spoiled in this sort of 20 in one run during the Jalen Hurts era. And I say, this is the glory days of, of Philadelphia Eagles football. This is the NFL. This is not college. This is not Alabama against, uh, uh, um, you know, Furman where, you know, all right, Alabama's winning this game. Any NFL team can win um, if you don't bring your A game. Everybody's got good players. Just talked about it. You know, the Washington Commanders. Look, the Eagles are significant favorites in this game for a reason. Washington Commanders have uh, uh, Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne and Montez Sweat and Chase Young is finally healthy and playing like the number two overall pick in the draft that it was supposed to be. And Terry McLaurin, who's given the Eagles headaches for years, and um, uh, Jahan Dodson's a first-round pick, and Curtis Samuel's a real slot receiver, and the Eagles don't have a slot cornerback. They got a lot of good players. Brian Robinson. Um, every NFL team has a lot of good players. You saw it against two teams they dominated o- over the past two weeks. Uh, Kirk Cousins thrown for 300 and whatever, 60 yards. Justin Jefferson, best wide receiver in football. Daniel Hunter, uh, Brian O'Neill, Tampa Bay, Vita Bay, uh, uh, Devin White, uh, Mike Evans going to the Hall of Fame. You saw the catch he made. Yeah, that was insane. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's got big time players in yeah. the NFL, including the Arizona Cardinals. Um, so, you know, I think there's this assumption that, oh, this team stinks and this team stinks. And, you know, there's obviously good teams and bad teams. Um, but you see it all the time, and there's that, and you'll see it again. It'll probably happen week seven, week eight, where the worst team, you can you can play that game. Uh, so-and-so beats so-and-so, who beats so-and-so, who beats so-and-so, and you can go through the entire league. Um, that's the NFL. And... Yeah, people, if the Eagles, remember, of those 21 games we're talking about in this current streak with Jalen Hart as the starter, 
Who'd they lose to? The Washington Commanders. That's not the best team they played. Not even close. Mm -hmm. But that's who they lost to. Absolutely. And that matchup is so interesting in and of itself because when you think back, it wasn't, there wasn't necessarily anything. The most remarkable thing that the Commanders did in that game was dominate time of possession the way they did. I think they had the Eagles beat in terms of time of possession, like 40 minutes, like 19 minutes. It was like no comparison. And on top of that, the commanders ran the ball like 40 plus times. So, we, you know, the Eagles weren't able to get off the field. Um, they weren't winning on first down. On top of that, they turned the ball over like three or four times. So there were so many variables that went into that loss um, outside of the commanders. So, um, you know, when, when, you, when you put it when you put it in perspective like that, also the quarterback was Tyler Heineke. Didn't have a great game at all. Didn't throw a touchdown, threw an interception, as a matter of fact. There was, there was nothing necessarily remarkable that they did in that game. Um, in saying all that, you know, let's talk about this commander's offense versus this Eagles defense, because I think that's going to be uh, something that's can either go really well for the Philadelphia Eagles or it can go semi well. And what I mean by that is they can either just crash and jump right on this commander's offense and just get like seven, eight, nine sacks like the team before did, or they can just have a, a mediocre day and somehow, some way, Sam Howell goes for 250, 300 passing yards, but they still win the game. Um, but let's really put this in perspective, right? The commanders, and I want to start with their rushing attack. They are averaging right now five yards per rush. Now, granted, that's a pretty good number when you, when you take it at face value, right, John? But the reality is, in three weeks' time, they faced the three worst run defenses when it comes to yards per attempt allowed, right? So let me let me let me add this in for you, John. And I want to get your perspective on this. They went up against Arizona in week one. They were ranked, Arizona's currently ranked 26th in terms of rushing yards per attempt at 4.6 yards per attempt. Then they faced off against Denver who was giving up 5.6 yards per attempt. They're ranked 31st. And then they run, went up against Buffalo, uh, averaging 5.9 yards per attempt, which is ranked 32nd. So the commanders aren't really doing a good job against good teams. They're kind of taking advantage of poor run defenses. This is the best run defense they're going to fit, that, they, that they're probably going to face against, uh, go up against right now. Um, how do you think this thing bodes for the Washington commanders and – how should the Eagles uh, handle that pseudo rushing attack that the commanders may or may not have? Well, they're going to, I mean, you brought up the game, which the, the commanders won and that the time of possession and they ran the ball 49 times, I think in that game, yeah. when you count the quarterback in, mm -hmm. um, they averaged under, you know, their longest run was 11 yards in that game, 11 yards. Uh, Robinson had 26 for 86 because uh, I did this for the show. So I have it 26 for 86. Gibson was 14 for 44. That's 3.3. That's 3.14. Uh, Samuel was four for 12. That's three. Heineke was five for 10. That's two. They were under the highest was 3.3. The lo longest run was 11 yards. Um, you know, the, the problem was the Eagles turned it over four times and three yards in a cloud of dust is, was what I called that game. So yeah, you, are they an explosive running team? No. Can they run for 3.3 .3 yards per carry? Yes, they did it last year. Um, and, and you also have to look at the Eagles opposition. Look. You know, you, you 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 can spin anything you 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 can spin anything the way you want to see it. And, and the minute we're talking about four hundred plus yards, four hundred twenty-five plus yards, two hundred plus on the ground, consecutive weeks, first time since nineteen fifty. That's pretty impressive, right? Well, you know, Minnesota's an eight-man coverage didn't come out of it. So they have six man boxes. Um, they're not trying to stop the run. They were trying to stop AJ Brown and Devontae Smith, and um, which they should be ashamed of themselves because they let uh, Devontae get loose twice. In Tampa Bay, um, a little bit different. 
Um, so every everything is kind of you know how you want to spin it. Um, but look, the Eagles have not faced teams that run the football well. Alexander Madison, Rashad White. That's not good. Right. Now, New England's, you know, and Nick Sirianni talked about that with us, Ramondre Stevenson. If you think about the previous season, the Patriots were, because, I mean, it's week one. All you have is – Yeah, they're they're, they're okay. Okay. They're okay, but he's not Christian McCaffrey either. Right, that's true. Not not many are. (laughs) This this Brian Robinson, who isn't any great shakes. I like that player. Um. He might be the best running back they faced this year. Him or Stevenson. It depends who you like better. I would say Stevenson's a little bit better, but you can make an argument it's Robinson. So at some point they're gonna face a a team with a good running back. And you know, maybe it's the Jets, maybe um maybe Miami. I mean Raheem Mostert's having a pretty good season. Well, yeah, or, or I and, and, and maybe even game. that. I mean, I I wish I could get everybody on board. This is not a statistical game. You're this right. This is not a stat. You know who leads the league in rushing right now? It's not the Eagles. Right. You know who it is, Tom? Uh, I think it's uh, t- what is who it's is the it? The Dolphins. The Dolphins, right? Yeah. Because a, I mean, they had, a, they had that one game that was yeah. astronomical, right? A, it's a small sample size. Number one. But stats but, show trends, right? I mean, you, I mean, stats got to show some kind of play it. Here's the problem. Here's the problem with baseball. It's real because they play so many games. They don't play enough games in the NFL, and it's an unbalanced schedule. Everybody doesn't play the same schedule. Okay. So it, it, it's a really unbalanced schedule. Everything's unbalanced, but um, even baseball, because you play more teams uh, in, in certain uh, shakes and NBA. But the more games you play, the bigger sample size – the more valid statistics become. At Miami, just look at what they did in the offseason. Every time they're trying to get Dalvin Cook, they're trying to get Josh Jacobs, they're trying, they're telling you, we don't believe in our running backs. Mm. All of a sudden, they show up and they're leading the league and rushing through three weeks. They didn't even believe in their running backs. Yeah, that's a good point. That's now, good point. you know, teams are trying to stop and they're not doing a good job. Teams are trying to stop Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell um, when he's healthy and all the receivers and all their explosive and all their speed. Um, and they do have speed even in the backfield, but they don't have good running backs. Long-term, over 17 games, Raheem Mostert has been around for a long time. He's had some nice games in San Francisco. He's had some nice games in Miami. He keeps bouncing around for a reason. Come on, Raheem Mostert. You know, a lot of people in Philadelphia are are making the gold jacket for DeAndre Swift <laughs> and saying, "How could Detroit trade DeAndre Swift? They had him for three years. You know, six hundred seventeen yards. Maybe it's Lane Johnson and Landa Dickerson and Jason Kelsey and Cam Jurgens and Jordan Mailata. I mean." Is he better than Kenny Gainwell? Yeah, he's proven that. But, you know, and you you can generally stop anything you want to stop in this league if, if you really want to sell out to stop it, whether it's the best running back, Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson. If you want to put three people on him, you can stop him. Um, but you're going to give up other stuff. So that's the give and take, and that's why the Eagles are so good. Because a lot of teams, if you take away, you know, say you take away uh, Jefferson, well, Alexander Madison's not going to hurt you. You know, if you take away A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith can hurt you. Dallas Goddard can hurt you. Uh, Behind this offensive line, DeAndre Swift has proven he can hurt you. That's what makes the Eagles so good 
Uh, but yeah, statistics and I, and and here's the sacks. The sacks, the pass rush has been every bit as good as last year. Yeah, I think the Eagles are what ranked top ranked in the top three in terms of pass rush win rate, something like that. It's, it's yeah. some stat where they're ranked in the top five. And pressure, uh, you know, Hassan Reddick. Hassan Reddick's getting. My, I got to deal with this every morning with Jody because he's a stat guy. He hasn't gotten a sack. He's got a higher pressure rate this year than they had last year. He's getting he's he's not finishing. Part of that is the cast. He's getting the cast off, so that's positive. Also, but, quarterbacks are getting that ball off faster, right? Yeah, very fast, very fast. And you could bet. So it's the enemy. So this would be the game then, where because I, I knew you. I, I think I know where you're going. You, I think what where you're about to go with is you can expect Airbnb to try to set up Sam Howell to get the ball out quicker, but. You know, still Sam Howell has some tendencies. He has some things that he needs to work. He's a young quarterback, right? So I don't think those issues are going to be ironed out uh, in, in the course of a week. If anything, I think they need to maybe tweak uh, the way they're out. Their offense is balanced. Um, right now, they're throwing the ball. They're, they're throwing the ball or they're passing the ball at a sixty-four point eight percent rate and, and running the ball at thirty-four point two percent. That's their, you know, their, their play breakdown. So. Sam Howe, he's been holding on to the ball. Four interceptions, nine sacks. I mean, it can't all be on the offensive line. So, I mean, this 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 has to be that week where the Eagles take advantage of a quarterback who potentially can hold on to that ball longer than he should. I don't know if Eric Bieniemy can solve that issue so quickly. Well, I, and and then that's you know, I look at last week's game. All right, there's a perfect example. Um, they got blitzed. They get they lost thirty seven to three. Um, they got destroyed. Uh, you know. So obviously, if you're behind, what are you gonna do? Go to that ball more. Yeah, and it's a small sample size. Now they were so ineffective, um, and they got so far behind. It was very similar to Tampa Bay. Only ran I think forty seven. Offensive plays uh, against the Eagles because they couldn't get anything going. Um, I'm looking it up. Washington ran 51 only, 51 offensive plays. Yeah, you're right. So they only ran it 13 times. And and by the way, that's a that's more than I would have expected because they were so far behind. But here's the sad part about it. So I'm sorry. Go ahead, John. So when you bring up that percentage, it's three games and one game they got blown out. So they had to throw it. They had to throw it. You got to throw that's, it. That's a good point. Early in the season, some like numbers can definitely lie to you for sure. So at this point in the season, then what metrics are you using, you know, to prepare for your opponent then? Um, well, teams use you know, what would be regarded by fans as advanced metrics, you know, they're okay. grading, you know, they're grading the spit and they've been, you know, they've been grading for years. Um, you know, what is your role on this particular play? And you give somebody a positive, a negative, um, and, you know, the closest thing would be PFF to where fans could, could get the numbers and, you know, that's how that's how NFL teams rate players. They're not looking at passer rating or yards per rush. Um, because everything, as I mentioned, is so disjointed. Um, you know, it's not really meaningful. Like that last take that last drive. And and by the way. For those who follow Honest NFL on Twitter or X, great account. Um, and he used to work for the Eagles, uh, former scouting guy. He 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 was talking about you know charting the game. He didn't even chart that drive because it's garbage time. And he said, "I don't chart garbage time mm. because it's not meaningful. Good or bad, it's not meaningful. The game's over. The game's over." Um. And there aren't a lot of games, you know, but 37 to three, the game's over. So not a lot of that is meaningful. Obviously, Washington did not play well. But what tends to happen in the NFL is there's overcorrections when you have a game like that. So they mm-hmm. really struggled in pass protection. So I guarantee that's what I was saying about Eric Bieniemy. Not only is he 
drilling Sam Howell all week. You got to get rid of the football. You got to this this pass rush is better than the one you just saw. Right. You got to get rid of the football. You got to get rid of the football. He's also going to max protect a lot, um, and they're going to overcorrect. That tends to be what happens in the NFL. So I would not expect a nine sack game, um, and that's not going to be a disappointment necessarily. You know, if the Eagles make him uncomfortable and they get him off his spots and they speed him up and they make him turn the football over or they make him make bad throws, that's what matters. But that's esoteric. So, you know. So, is, 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 is okay, that's interesting because in that game against Buffalo, they threw the ball on a grand total 29 times. Granted, they only had 51 plays, but they threw the ball 29 times. And that's – I don't. in today's NFL, 29 times, is that a lot? Not really. But at the same time, though, I anticipate Eric B. Enemy throwing the ball as least – like. I anticipate him not trying to keep that ball in Sam Howell's hands for like any more than he should. So I, I, I personally, like you said, an overcorrection. I personally expect them to try to run the ball a little bit more, try to establish it early on. And that's why I think it's so important for this Eagles defense to just nip the run in the butt so early to the point where they're forcing Sam Howell to beat them, which is going to create more pass rush opportunities and potential opportunities for a turnover. I think, I think that, I think this game is going to be won and lost. Uh, on first down for the Philadelphia Eagles uh, tremendously. Now, uh, but I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give an explanation of, of again okay. why stats don't necessarily matter. Well, okay. we mentioned all right, they ran 51 plays, right? As you mentioned, they only threw it 29 times. They ran it 13 times, as I mentioned. That's mm-hmm. 42. Where are the missing plays? Nine missing plays. They got sacked mm-hmm. nine times. They got set. Those are the missing plays. So that 29 really is 38. 38. Ah, yes. Yes. And 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 they only ran it 13 times. And you, so you talk about that percentage, the run pass ratio. It doesn't it it doesn't matter. Doesn't tell the whole story. No, it doesn't matter. And because I've been arguing about this with Jody for years and many people over the years, what's you got to have 50, 50, you got to be balanced. You got to have the run pass ratio. Tell me what the score is in the fourth quarter. And I'll tell you what the run pass ratio is. If you're down 10 points, you're going to, you're going to throw the ball a lot. If you're up 10 points, you're going to run the ball a lot. It's, it's common sense, but it gets lost in the sauce because people pick up a box score and they, you know, they take it as gospel. Mm. So, okay, hear me out on this then, right? Obviously, you're not a stat guy, John, and I don't. And I don't. Well, not in stats. football. I think. Well, 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 not, not, not very, in football, right? Very relevant in baseball, right? Very right. relevant. But in football, in football, you don't lean heavily on the stats, right? Um, you tend to you tend to look at things in the the macro, um, but also a stat that I think is important that can be overlooked is your ability to convert third downs. And that's another area where the Washington commanders are one of the worst teams in the NFL. They're converting third downs at a 25% clip. The Philadelphia Eagles have to take advantage of that. There's no if, ands, but I think this has to be one of those games where your offense, your defense is just working and and just it's, your offense and your defense are synonymous. I, I just feel like this is a game where the, the Eagles should dominate from top to bottom, side to side, beginning to end. Um, yeah, I, I, again, I'm going to go back to small sample size. It's skewed. It's not meaningful because you have the one game. Because there are bad um, – there are bad statistics for the Eagles right now. That's true. Um, like pass defense or passing yards giving up something like that. That's a really bad passing number. passing touchdowns given up. Um they've been bad on on I'm trying to pull it up as we speak. Let's see. So here's where the Eagles have been bad um through the first three games. 
Mm -hmm. Um, they're 25th in red zone offense. Yeah. They're 23rd in pass offense. They're 25th in pass defense. They're 25th in third down defense. They're 26th in red zone defense. The Eagles aren't that bad. The numbers say right now they're the worst pass defense team in the NFL, but that's not the whole story. Well, not the worst. But, not the worst, but you know, one of. Um, yeah, one of the worst. Um, they're not. I mean, they they the game that skewed it for them was Minnesota because they gave up the 360 yards and four touchdowns, but they were in control of the game and Minnesota was down 20 points and they were thrown back and you have Justin Jefferson, you have to, and, and that's what I'm talking about. So yeah, people want to make it out. I'm not making excuses for the commanders and that's oh, why I bring no, up the I, I, get, I get it. I think you're just saying you can skew any number to fit your narrative. You know, if you know, if 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 you if you truly want to, it doesn't tell the whole story. I think that's pretty much what you're saying. Yeah, especially this early. Now, as you get to later in the season, it's more valuable. It becomes more valuable as the sample size gets larger. What's the cutoff for you? What's the week where you when you where where you can say, okay, this stat becomes valuable? Probably about three quarters through the season you start to figure out because you're going to have some good games you're going to have some bad games and so that's about and generally nine, 10 and generally what? you know it'll shake out to say all right we're good here i guarantee you the eagles aren't going to be 23rd in passing offense and i think it starts this week and i talked about it a lot this week with a bunch of guys dallas goddard Brian Johnson, Nick Sirianni, all of them, you know, they faced a lot of exotic defenses designed to stop the pass. People came into this season and, and they, you had the three coordinators right off the bat, three of the most innovative defensive minds in football just happened to work out that way for the Eagles. And they came in and they said, we're going to try to stop the passing game. And we're going to try to pen in Jalen Hurts. And for the most part, they succeeded. But the Eagles are so good, they just pivoted to the running game and they won the games. Um, now, in, in Dallas, the coaches will never admit this, but Dallas did. He said, things are going to go back to normal. They, they saw the tape on Washington. They're going to play more traditional defense. Um and I think the passing game is going to get going this week. And if it doesn't, maybe start to worry about that. Because, look, if you're playing umbrella coverage and you're you're not coming out of six-man fronts, it's going to be tough to, to throw the ball. Um, but there's not many people, and it's one of, one of the Eagles to, to, coaches told me that, there's not many people that would have stayed in it the entire game like Brian Flores did. He stayed in it. What are you going to do? You got to run the ball. And they ran it. And that's a feather in their cap. Um, but the passing numbers don't look good right now because teams have been trying to take that away. And now that they've proven they can win games by running the football – Maybe they have to come out of that. Maybe you have to think about going things a, a different way. But long term, if I'm a defensive coordinator and you line up the Eagles playmakers, for, for me, it's AJ, number one, Devontae, number two, Dallas, number three, um, and, then, and then DeAndre, number four. So – if somebody's going to beat me, it's going to be DeAndre. And he has. He beat Minnesota and he beat Tampa Bay. And that's why the Eagles are good. On that note, you guys, we're going to end it there, man. John, I appreciate the time that you were able to give me this evening, man. Um, this is always great talking football with you. Um, make sure you guys smash that like button. Also, make sure you guys continue to stay engaged in the content and make sure you guys subscribe to the Jacob Sports uh, YouTube channel that really helps the channel grow. Uh, it really helps the business grow as well. So make sure you guys uh, continue to stay locked in. We appreciate all the love. 
uh, and support you guys provide. Uh, make sure you guys continue to stay locked in on all the programming that Jacob Sports is providing to you. And also make sure you guys lock in uh, with John McMullen on jacobsports.com and si.com, which is also known as sportsillustrated.com. He does a lot of great work uh, for those guys as well. So um, make sure you smash that like button, stay engaged in the content. John, any uh, announcements, anything that you're working on that you want to put out there into the universe? Uh, no, but I should mention the Eagles ruled out uh, Sidney Brown today. He's not okay. going to play on Sunday. They also ruled out Quez Watkins. He's going to miss another game, so it'll be both still with hamstring, play. right? Uh, yeah, both have hamstring issues. Uh, Justin Evans, though, was surprised back at practice today. And That's he, big. He, he was a full practice participant, and he was listed as questionable. So it's it's not 100% he's going to play, but when you're a full participant on Friday, generally that's a really good sign. So Eagles may have lucked out. Um, I think it was a stinger with Justin Evans. So mm. um, that that's big because if you don't have Justin Evans and Sidney Brown, you only have two safeties on the roster. So uh, to have that third guy is very, very big. Um, so could have been worse. Could have been better, but uh, I would say nickel cornerback again because of Curtis Samuel, and the commanders will want to get rid of the football quick, quickly, and you have a, a traditional slot receiver that's very fast, very quick, and the Eagles really are going to try to combat that with – a six foot two outside corner and you know it's it's a matchup to watch yeah that should be interesting uh james bradbury playing on the inside that's uh that's you know that just looks it, it looked weird to me um watching it last week so uh you know we'll, we'll see how that thing turns out but again john i appreciate you man for always locking in with me um eagles fans stay locked in uh me and john are gonna are gonna be back tomorrow to discuss uh the eagles offense versus uh, the commander's defense. Today we spoke about the NFC East and we discussed the Eagles defense versus the commander's offense. Tomorrow we're going to talk about the Eagles offense versus the commander's defense. And it's straight like that, you guys. Smash that like button. Make sure you guys are subscribed to Jacob Sports YouTube channel. He's John McMullen. I'm Tony Shills the second. You guys were locked in on football 24-7. Take care and enjoy the rest of your evening.